Jared Goff got completely written off. Kicked to the curb, dumped in the dump. However you want to put it, he was basically cast off as a nobody on his last legs with the Lions. His confidence was shot. You are the same level as Matthew Stafford, plus two first and a third. Well, once Ben Johnson got his hands on him, his confidence has skyrocketed, and after back-to-back 4,400-yard -back seasons, the Lions have their first playoff win in literal decades. When we dive into the film, we can see the masterclass Johnson has put on to elevate his confidence by building around his strengths, which, trust me, is no easy task. By designing an offense focused on two areas, Goff's ability to dominate underneath and over the middle, and a scheme focused on deception, it's given him an explosion of confidence coming off a time in his career where he was probably the least confident he's ever been in his entire life. To keep the heat off their quarterback, the Lions run the eighth most in neutral pass situations. They deploy a ton of heavier personnel sets with two tight ends, a lot of the time even three tight ends, to force defenses to keep attacking the line so that Goff can throw it right behind their ear hole. Not only is Johnson's scheme good, but his in-game adjustments are even better. Against the Vikings in Week 18, they have two tight ends on the field, James Mitchell, and they like to use, you know, the 6'10", 320-pound left tackle Dan Skipper as the other. This is what offenses call escort motion, which adds a body to the play side of the run so you can gain another hat. It helps with the blocking angles for the rest of the offensive line too, and the Vikings defense just looks unprepared for this run on the goal line. Touchdown. You can see the defensive line pinch inside to clog up the middle, then the second level fly outside way over the top. But the Lions are running mid-zone, attacking the middle, and they score. Why were the Vikings so unprepared? Because last time Detroit was on the goal line a few quarters before, they used the same formation, the same escort motion, albeit with a more regular-sized human being. And with Gibbs speed on the toss, they can't catch him outside. They use this formation with a condensed receiver outside to crack block the defensive end. This helps get the tight end Sam Laporta outside in the perimeter, so now they are 2 for 2 and nobody is there to hit Gibbs. So going back to our first play, when the Vikes see a receiver condensed down again, they know they're getting the same crack toss, they know now Skipper is escorting across, so they pinch inside to take care of the dive, but know they have to fly over the top horizontally to beat the running back to the edge on the toss, but Johnson knows what they're gonna do. These are the kind of mind games he can play with defensive coordinators, and these are the kind of offensive elements that open everything up for Goff. Before we dive deeper on how he's elevated, I want to thank this season's sponsor, PrizePix. PrizePix is a daily fantasy sports site where you can pick players every day. With the playoffs here, they've got every game, tons of different projections to play. If you want to spice up divisional round weekend, PrizePix is the move. To get going, you choose two to six players and select whether they go higher or lower than their projection. Prize Picks likes to do Taco Tuesday discounts where they've shaved a little off CMC's number here. And then with the Niners, in my opinion, blowing out the backers, I think Love will get some garbage time yardage at the end. Prize Picks is so much fun to play. It's the only app I've been using all season, all postseason. It just makes football or any sport that much more fun when you're playing with something extra. It's easy to get your money out. It's easy to play in just a couple of seconds. If you want to give it a shot, use my promo code Rollins and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. That's promo code Rollins. To dive deeper into how Johnson builds an offense around Goff to give him confidence, let's focus on the deception he creates, which as I said, is a huge part of their offense. He'll mix formations, personnel, multiple looks wrapped into one play, all of it to put defenses in the spin cycle, I mean, look at everything going on here. First, he flips wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown with running back Jameer Gibbs. He jet motions Gibbs across, which forces the Broncos to bump over. He play action fakes with Amon Ra. He also pulls the guard, which is a run tell for the defense. Then he boots Goff to the right, all while having tight end Sam Laporta pretend to block, then sneak out the back door, trailing Amon Ra to the left. This is a literal nightmare to keep track of, even from down here in my uncle's basement. Imagine what it's like seeing it on the field. Laporta ends up being Josie Jewel's responsibility, but watch everything Jewel has to look at. His eyes are moving at the snap because of the motion, he sees the guard, the play-action fake, Amon Ra is running to the left, 
but that's not his responsibility. Goff's booting to the right. Laporta looks like he's blocking the whole time, and Jewel completely loses him. Johnson also helps by maximizing yardage on screens, which the Lions used the eighth most in the league and had the third highest success rate on, according to Sports Info Solutions. We've talked a lot about the Vikings' cover zero defense, which puts one more blitzer on the line than the offense has blockers, and creates one-on-one -on -one man coverage for the rest of the defense. Offenses run screens all the time against the Vikings, because if you can break just one tackle outside, you've got yourself a big play. But Johnson takes it an extra step further to raise the odds of success. He spreads out the formation, but has two tight ends to the left. Since it's man coverage, this forces linebacker Jordan Hicks to play safety in the middle of the field. I personally have never seen a linebacker lined up here pre-snap, and it forces Hicks to be the free defender and have to run down Amon Ra. Johnson also switches the assignments of Laporta and Mitchell to give them better leverage on their blocks. This helps Mitchell, who has more leverage on the safety, and then helps Laporta by putting him one-on-one -on -one with a cornerback so he can kick ass. All of this is done to create threats all over the field so Goff can capitalize. He's at his best when throwing underneath with his accuracy and then throwing inbreakers over the middle. Everything Ben Johnson does is to help set him up to do what he does best. For example, the biggest threat to the over-the-middle concepts like Dagger is the second-level linebackers gaining depth and falling back into the middle. Dagger is a good concept because the inbreaker runs away from the cornerback, so the only real defenders who can stop it are the men one level in front. So not only does Johnson incorporate a nice fake zone windback action, but he adds an element most other coordinators don't to ensure that the second level can't get in the way. By sliding a shallow crosser underneath, this grabs the attention of one of those underneath linebackers and increases the chance that this concept is open by the time Goff is ready to throw. Johnson can also adjust through the air in-game and can make adjustments. Early on when he sees that the Vikings are being ultra-aggressive with their second level charging the run action and are leaving a gaping void over the middle, kind of keeps this corner here ready to catch a receiver crossing the formation. Also, awesome throw by Goff. Johnson adjusts his game plan and knows he can attack that middle of the field with a modified concept. So later in the game, he runs dagger stop, knowing the Vikings will attack the run fake and kinda hang a corner across the field waiting for the concept, so his guys just sit down and collects the easy money. You can just feel Goff's confidence slowly growing over these last two years. Johnson hasn't asked him to do what he can't, only what he can, and it's turned Goff's career around. By the end of his Rams era, you could tell McVay didn't have faith in him, so neither did he. While now everybody has faith in him, nobody more than himself. Historically, he's not an ISO fade thrower, but there were a couple examples of him just taking one-on-one -on -one fades outside, even with the protection busting. Throwing under pressure is not his strong suit, but he immediately just rips it. One of my favorite examples incorporates the old positives that are still there from Goff, the cerebral part of his game, where he can process a lot of information and win from the pocket, combined with his newfound confidence. The Vikings are showing what kind of looks like their cover zero package again. Eight guys on the line can bust almost any protection, and then they have just three deep in what looks like man coverage. The Lions have a cover two beater to the left, Skipper is the flat receiver, then a corner fade type route from Amon Ra, and cover two is exactly what the Vikings are disguising. Both corners play deep halves, Hicks plays the middle, and then even though it looks like Harrison Smith and Cameron Bynum could be playing man, they're playing underneath flats, which also allows them to bang into the two receivers. Goff play action fakes, so he doesn't get any time to see much of the disguise take place at all, and the old Goff would a hundred out of a hundred get spooked and hit the check down to Skipper to the left, or David Montgomery on the check down over the middle, but the new Goff has confidence brimming out of every hole, pause, and he rips the fade up the sideline. What I like is watching his eyes pick up the middle run through defender Jordan Hicks. So at this point here, Goff knows it's cover two. Then he's about to throw the check down, but sees Harrison Smith banging in Domin Ra, then coming down for Skipper, so he reroutes and throws the ball deep. What even further demonstrates to me his confidence is the way he trusts his protection. The Lions are sliding to the right in case the safety comes off the edge, so that means they only have two linemen, one of which is Skipper going to the flat, against three potential threats. 
When Harrison Smith is down in the line, he's usually coming, so he is David Montgomery's responsibility. If Smith does come, Montgomery has to abort the play fake, and you can see his eyes on Smith. Goff has to have full trust in him to abort the fake with his head turned, or else he'll get drilled from the back, pause. So when he sees Montgomery carry out the fake, he trusts him, doesn't panic at all that he might have a free runner off the edge, and then makes this difficult throw up the sideline. The Lions are operating at peak confidence right now, and it's led by their quarterback. Goff was a beaten down man when he arrived three years ago. He immediately then had to watch the Rams win a Super Bowl without him, but that didn't stop him or the Lions. Ben Johnson built an offense around his strengths, used deception to create an offensive ecosystem that made him a star, and here the Lions are in the divisional rounds coming off one of their biggest wins in franchise history. Nothing is more terrifying than a quarterback with confidence. Goff has his limitations, but not in this offense, and as he continues down the playoff road with this team and this coaching staff around him, the Lions are finally legit.